moment, I'm going to more properly introduce the IFAC's new president, Olivia Kirtley, and I'll do that in just a moment. But for now, I'd like to ask Olivia to come up to present the Sempier Award. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to be the first bidder on that poncho, if it's okay with you. <laughs> the Sympier Award was created by the IFAC Council in 1991 to honor the contributions of Robert Sempier, IFAC's first executive director. The award recognizes outstanding contributions to the accountancy profession by an individual over many years and is awarded only every four years during the World Congress. I am honored to announce that this year's recipient for the Symphia Award is Ndugu Gudinga. If Ndugu could um, join me here on stage. And while he is coming, I will tell you about Ndugu. As chair of the IFAC Developing Nations Task Force, and Ndugu's commitment to the importance of accountancy and professional accountancy organizations, or as we fondly call them, PAOs, in emerging and developing economies helped to ensure continued global attention to this important area of the profession. Please come join me over here. I want everyone to see this man. His commitment also led to the establishment of the Permanent Developing Nations Committee, which has evolved into the PAO Development Committee. His work also helped instill the importance of this area in the accountancy profession within IFAC, a commitment that stands strong to this day and can be seen in our activities and initiatives to develop the global accountancy profession. He implanted the principle of cooperation and collaboration between the accountancy profession, the donor community, and other stakeholders, working together to support the growth of the profession and of PAOs, a principle that is still visible in the work of Mosaic and IFAC's partner with the UK Department of International Development. This award also recognizes Ndungu's tireless work to promote the accountancy profession in Kenya and throughout Africa, including his pioneering efforts with the Eastern, Central, and South African Federation of Accountants and the Institute of Public Accountants in Kenya. All of which have ensured that the value of the profession is understood and embraced in Africa in a way that would never have been possible without his efforts. Ndungu helped establish the African Federation of Stock Exchanges Association in 1993 and has served as its Honorable Secretary since. He was also a member of the Standards Advisory Council of the International Accounting Standards Committee and an observer representing Africa at the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development's Intergovernmental Working Group of Experts on International Standards of Accounting and Reporting. In full, Ndungu's served IFAC for 23 years. And he has served the accountancy profession during his entire distinguished career. He is a recognized leader and a passionate activist for our profession. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the 2014 recipient of the IFAC Sempier Award in Dungu Gadingji. Uh, 
Thank you, Madam President. Uh, distinguished Congress organizers and participants, guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm no McAntony, but we are in Rome, so if you don't mind, I'll ask you to lend me your ears. I thought my life had come to an end when, as an eight-year-old and the eldest of four siblings, I woke up one morning to discover that both my parents had, during the night, been collected and sent to prison for four years by the British authorities under the Mau Mau detention laws in Kenya. My parents could read and write, and my father was a corporal in the Second World War. And they therefore fitted the profile of the potential troublemakers that the colonialists thought needed to be removed from the rebellious Kikuyu community who were agitating for independence. My two little sisters, aged one and three, and my five-year-old brother were taken in by relatives. But I was considered too old to be adopted and was left free to determine my own destiny, which I've been trying to do ever since. How, How I survived the war and even attended school from time to time is the story of another day. But eventually I found myself in high school. In those days, all the school headmasters and most of the teachers were British. By a strange coincidence, the headmaster of the first high school I attended and the biology master of the second school had sons who were chartered accountants. The pride with which the fathers talked about their sons' careers made me determined to give my own parents the same pleasure. But they did not live to see this particular event. I thought the formula was simple. Be good at the mathematics and the rest was easy. But it was not. It was not because accountancy like law or growing coffee in Kenya was prohibited to the natives. Independence would, of course, change all that. But it took me until I was at the newly established University of Nairobi studying engineering before I could find a sponsor to get me to England to study accountancy. And so abandoning the engineering course, I flew to England. There were no visas in those days. <laughs> and got articled in Liverpool to a firm of accountants that later became part of Deloitte and Twitch. Four years later, the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales had their first African member in Kenya. I was in such a hurry to get home that the partner in charge of my training had to explain why I left before my articles expired. He said I passed my exams rather quickly, which was unusual. I took that as a compliment. <laughs> back, back home, the newly independent country was making plans to start a local accountancy profession, again as opposition from the usual suspects. The Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya was finally created by an act of parliament in 1977 and you'll note that that is the same year that IFAC was formed. When the IFAC Ethics Code was being developed in the 1980s, the Institute of Kenya was asked to provide one committee member, which we did. His name was Joe Muchakehu. And he must have impressed somebody at IFAC because three years later, they came back to us and asked us to, and invited us to join the IFAC board. And being president of ISPAC at that particular time, the honor fell on me. I was in my 40s in a country where life expectancy for men was 49. So you can guess that 
my expectations had to be short term. <laughs> More so when, if you are appointed, nominated to represent the institute, you had to bear the cost to yourself because the institute couldn't afford it. But as it turned out, I would stay at IFAC in various capacities for a very long time, as you've heard. But in the very first year of my joining the board, Richard Wilkes, the first president I served under, challenged me to get the African profession organized, but with a condition that I should not leave out the then still apartheid governed South Africa, which was an extra challenge. But eventually, the Eastern Central and Southern African Federation of Accountants, ExaFA, was born. But an even bigger challenge for me was to get the African seen and heard within the IFAC institutions. John Gruner, who took over as IFAC CEO from Bob Sempier, was an early supporter. And uh, President Juan Herrera, I was appointed to head a newly created membership committee, which was the forerunner to the assignments that came later. But the man without whom I would not be here today was President Rene Rico, who used, who used his French powers of persuasion to get first the Developing Nations Task Force created and later to see it converted to a full standing committee. There was some opposition to the idea, given IFAC's allegedly limited resources. President Graham Ward made it part of his policy to always say something about the efforts being made towards supporting the developing profession worldwide. And this, in turn, challenged us on the committee to always have something new for him to announce such as a new translation into the UN languages of the committee's publications, breaking the, with the tradition of IFAC being an English language only body. Meanwhile, at grassroots level, there were many people working in various subcommittees and task forces to promote the concept that a worldwide body such as IFAC could only be relevant if it combined standard setting with development support initiatives. That's why I pushed for the link between IFAC and Tatiana Krarova at Ankta Raisa in Geneva, whose meetings I attended for over 10 years. Rene Rico again obliged and eventually signed the MOU between Ankta Raisa and IFAC. The Accounting Standards Board in London was a harder nut to crack. But Sir David Tweedy did invite me at his cost thank you for that, to push for my interests at the ASB Advisory Council, which I did for five years. I wanted the standards issued free in hard copy, but all I could manage was a subsidized price for my ex for members. I left without the other projects close to my heart, the accounting standards for SMEs having materialized, but eventually, it too happened. It has been a long but enjoyable journey, ranging from being made a chief by the Oba of Lagos <laughs> to, <laughs> to being frozen to near death in the winters of Eastern Europe. <laughs> I have played golf with President Bartle Edrood in Stockholm and with President Frank Harding in Muirfield. Maybe he doesn't remember that. And for Frank particularly, I will remember him allowing me to put motions that had been rejected by the council before yet again, trying to get them accepted. But I had inherited my mother's brains, I think, and her indomitable spirit. I'm sure that those I worked with closely, such as Milu Kelly on the membership committee, and Russell Guthrie on all subsequent activities, often had to resist the temptation of jumping ship 
or better still, probably throwing me overboard. But seriously, on development activities, IFAC may not know how useful Raso Gathri has been. But then again, maybe IFAC does. Getting Deborah Williams on the committee and using her in persuading her government, British government, to look kindly on struggling professions in developing countries and support IFAC's efforts was, in my view and in hindsight, inspired. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ian Ball. You are there as the third member of the delegation that called at the DFID offices in London on a cold, wet morning. And thank you for also for your patience and advice. Over the many years we worked together, and congratulations for your Gold Service Award at this Congress. There are so there are so many people I would like to mention, but the time allowed is not enough. It reminds me of President Fermin Delvace and the way he would whisper to me whenever he handed me the mic, say only a word or two, please. I tried very hard to comply, but I always appear to have more to say than the time allowed me. However, all my colleagues, on the various committees know that I speak from the heart when I tell them that I would not have managed anything without them. But the organization that bore most of the financial burden of what I did within Exafa and the world at large was ACCA, and I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to recognize the support that I and the profession in Africa enjoyed from Anthea Rose, Alan Blewett, and Helen Brand, the three CEOs with whom I interacted closely. The launch, the launch of the Audit Quality Review Scheme in the Exafa region is but one such example. Africa is a difficult place to operate in. We try to communicate in foreign languages that we do not always understand very well. We, we tend to compete rather than cooperate with each other. We often fail to focus on the future of the greater good and instead pursue narrow personal or national interests. Yes, Africa is so complicated that attempting to do anything on a continental basis will always be a monumental task. And I really wish PAFA, the Pan-African Federation of Accountants, the best of luck with the task that lies ahead. I say this as a person who not only founded a regional accountancy body, but also the African Securities Ex Exchange Association that uh, Olivia has just mentioned, with Jim Nabaru, which Jim Nabaru and I, and those from Kenya will know Jim Nabaru, established, and which is still going strong, in fact, meeting in Kenya in two weeks. These days, though, Everyone has agreed that Africa is on the rise. If you need convincing, just ask the Chinese or look around this hall. Those, <laughs> those who look at Africa through the lens of desperate migrants seeking to get to Europe are missing something and should perhaps stop and consider where that do or die spirit comes from. Not, not being satisfied with one's lot in life is after all a prerequisite to bettering oneself. The best from Africa is yet to come. It was in this city in 1960 at the Rome Olympics that Abebe Bikila, an Ethiopian, won the first marathon for Africa. And look how far we have come since then 
in that particular sector alone. I think if a marathon is not won by Ethiopia or an Ethiopian or a Kenyan, uh, something is wrong. <laughs> I am humbled by the decision of the current IFAC nominating committee and the IFAC board under the leadership of Warren Allen and Fires Children to grant me this award. But you had already honored me by appointing a younger and more beautiful Kenyan, Caroline Keegan, to be the fourth chair of the now renamed Professional Accountancy Organization Development Committee. I recall very clearly when I and my institute hosted Bob Sempi and the IFAC board in Nairobi just before he retired. It has been my privilege to have met so many of the right kind of people and to have suffered only repairable damage from the wrong kind I could not avoid. <laughs> the incoming IFAC president, or the current now IFAC president, Olivia Cutley, who has just presented me with this award, is herself breaking new ground as the first female president of IFAC. And I congratulate her as a pioneer in her own right. We in Africa are, however, still waiting for the first president of IFAC from the continent. <laughs> if there is a tide in the affairs of men, as Shakespeare says, then Africa's wave is overdue. Despite many absences from home, attending IFAC meetings all over the globe, I've been blessed with a wonderful family, represented here by my eldest son, Kengori, who is somewhere in the audience. I dedicate this award to them. For the many days I spent away from them and hope that there will be less need for them to consign my five and counting grandchildren to the same fate. I'm waiting to see which one of those grandchildren becomes an accountant like granddad. It would be nice to talk to each other in a language we both understand. But regardless, this award will be a wonderful addition to my repertoire of stories that I can entertain them with. I will forever be grateful to those who afforded me the opportunity to make the little contribution I could make while pursuing the profession that came to dominate such a large part of my life. Long live IFAC and the memory of Robert Sampier, who is quoted as having said that he had a gut feeling that this thing he started would get somewhere. And I think we can all assure him that he was right. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>